Hello Degenerates and welcome back to another Duck Hunt Guide for Smash Ultimate. Been a little while since we've done one of these, but um, since I've been doing critiques for a little while now, I've been able to commentate over a lot of beginner players and I've been really happy that I've been able to do that just because it's given me a lot of insight what people are struggling with specifically at this point in the game. So these five tips that I'm about to go over are geared more towards beginner players. However, even if you're like a more advanced player and you don't find yourself doing these things, these are all really good things to take note of. So the first tip that I want to talk about is something that's very important to the entirety of your neutral and some a move that you're going to be using a lot of time and that's going to be fair. So fair as you guys know, is like your main neutral and poking tool, and it has a lot of other uses. Um, it's basically going to help you stuff out a lot of people, it's your main tool to use to do whiff punishes, and it's also extremely safe as well. Um, just to give you an idea of how safe it is, um, if we go into a slow motion right here, and we control Marth, something that you're going to notice is that I'm going to be able to hit Marth's shield, without drifting back at all, and I'll be able to avoid hit the Dolphin Slash. Now, we're going to do the Fast Fall with uh, Duck Hunt, and I'm going to buffer Dolphin Slash with Marth. And because of like how far back Duck Hunt reels during that entire time, it's going to completely whiff. So something that like a lot of people do is that when they attack like Marth's shield with Fair, um, what they do is they end up going into him, and then they just do it like this. So, when the Duck Hunt player does it like that, or just like if you're attacking Marth in general, you're not going to be safe from it, you're going to be getting hit. However, if you learn to space it back, like from this distance over here, not only are you still able to hit him, um, but you're going to be able to hit the shield safely, and you're not going to have to worry about getting hit by Dolphin Slash, because of this little animation right here. So notice the Duck's out, and you can hit him. But the second that you land, the duck actually flies back. So basically, you can't actually hit a good part of uh, Duck Hunt from where he was before. We take a look at this again in slow motion. We're gonna throw out the fair here. I'm gonna fast fall. So look how far out the duck is. Now I'm hitting him. And now look how far back he's gonna go. So the second that I landed, the duck basically immediately went his full length back to where Duck Hunt is. And now he's just like completely on top of the dog himself. So that whole character space right there, we're basically able to avoid pretty much every single out of shield option from that, um, just by how far we go. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is because you can hit the duck, um, any options where it's like crouching would beat it out, um, it's not going to work because they are able to like grab the duck or hit them. So don't think like this will make you low profile anything. Uh, the one that does make you low profile is going to be Nair, but we're not here to talk about that move. We're here to talk about Fair. So, not only is this move just extremely safe in general, um, but it also leads into a lot of other things, uh, especially at low percents. So, if I do Fair at low percents, I can do that into a grab, and then that gets into a dash attack. So, that's like an immediate 28% right there. Uh, not to mention, if we also look at how far away Marth has moved at the moment, so like I, I did this time like at zero. We're basically at the ledge of FD at this point. So I basically have all this stage to work with and I'm able to just like take um, full advantage of just like all the stage I have to just like set up my can. So that's a very important thing to do. Um, and the other thing too is like since this move is not used for killing, it's specifically like only used for dealing damage. Um, it keeps like your moves like back air, strong nair and up air fresh as well. So then that way you're still going to be able to kill a lot earlier too. So overall, learning how to use fair properly is super important just so that you're safer in general. And just because like being able to use this move basically dictates like how well you can do a lot of matchups. For example, yesterday I was commentating over a Jigglypuff matchup and because of our mobility and having this move in conjunction with Can, it makes it really hard for Jigglypuff to get like anything done at all. So keep in mind, this is a very long reaching move with a lot of utility that needs to be used um, correctly in order to be effective. Like if you want to like get, be out of grab range, that's probably the other thing that I should show off. Being able to like space this move properly will do that as well. So here, 
and try to go against Marth. Um, and the other thing too is like if I do this like right up against him, and I I buffer a spot dodge while he buffers a grab, I should be able to avoid the grab too. So he's gonna grab. And so the shield came out, so I tried to do a spot dodge, but fortunately it's just making me do that. But as you can see, with that timing there, I would be able to spot dodge the grab, so that way, like even if they did like a tether or something like that, that wouldn't hit me. But in this case, I was just out of range of his grab. Like he just wasn't able to grab me because of how well I spaced fair. So that's kind of the other power of it too. So as long as you're able to do those things correctly, this move is safe from getting grabbed without even needing to spot dodge. Even if you don't space it properly, you can still spot dodge before every single grab. And if you space it properly, you'll be able to avoid up Bs out of shield. So in particular, you can avoid um, this one, which is Marth's and Lucina's Dolphin Slash, as well as um, Game & Watch's, um, Watch's Fire, which is his up B. The next tip we're going to be talking about is can movement. So can movement is just as important as being able to move around with the dog himself. Basically, you are controlling two characters at all times, and you want to consider the can to be uh, basically a puppet. So if you're not able to move the can like with like an intent and purpose and like understanding on what you're doing with it, then you're not going to really be able to fully utilize the extent of what this character is able to do. So, a um, couple things. Of course, just learn how to properly ping it so then that way you can just get into situations there. Like, let's say I wanted to target my opponent on that platform there. So if I like, press it too much and I don't take in consideration how the cam bounces, and like let's say I wanted to hit Marth in that instance, then I need to be able to know exactly how I need to maneuver the can in order to hit him. So there's like a couple of other ways that I can do it. So it's like I can ping it a lot, so that way the gravity gets higher so I can hit him much easier. Um, or I can do like this lighter approach where it goes slowly and I can hit him from below there as well. Um, the other thing that you should probably learn too, like not only just like regular pinging, is also how all of your attacks um, interact with it. It's always really important to know exactly how your attacks are going to influence the can, just because you're going to be using these the great majority of the time to move the can instead of just like pinging it all the time. Um, especially now with the added benefit that we can hit the can in the air, so the fact that you can just do like fair can like that. And um, something that's become kind of a favorite of a lot of players is to do um, that and then to just to dare the can. So then that way it's like you're able to just edge guard a little bit easier with that move. Um, so we're going to look at the main important ones you want to utilize as a beginner. So the easiest one to th take note of is like F tilt and down tilt. So when you use F tilt, very easy. You're going to just shoot the can in the direction that you want it to. Uh, down tilt is basically going to do the same thing, except you can move a little bit faster out of this move, and it also makes the dog and duck crouch. So the reason why this is important is if you look at F tilt, look at how tall like the dog's body is here, and look how tall the duck is. They're both kind of like at that mid-level height, where kind of like Mario would be. So any normal standing moves will generally hit this, or actually they all will hit this. Or if you use down tilt, when you do this move, they're all crouching, and you're able to low profile a lot of things, including a, a pretty good number of grabs as well. So with this, you're able to like kind of hit the can and like avoid anything that might go above you, and just keep yourself a lot safer too. Uh, the distance that uh, the can travels between getting hit between F tilt and D tilt is pretty the same. So here, it goes like about um, half of F D when you hit it with F tilt. And then if you do angle it, it does change it a little bit. So if you angle it down, it's going to go a little bit further. And then if you angle it up, it's going to fly a little bit higher, which allows it to go farther there. So that's one little important tidbit with um, F-Tilt. And then if you do D-Tilt, it's kind of pretty much the same thing as doing just regular F-Tilt there. As you can see, just about the same spot. The D-Tilt is just like a little bit shorter at least one of the more pings that you end up doing to it. Uh, next up, we're going to be looking at your main distance move, which is going to be dash attack. So when you do dash attack, you get that really nice high arc with it. And with this one, you're mostly going to be using dash attack to call out like a lot of high recovery. So like, let's say I knock Marth off when he's like at 50% and I happen to get him with like an F smash or something like that. He should be in a pretty good position.
I just realized he's on control. But basically, when he goes up there, I'm gonna have my can out, and then I'm gonna dash attack it to just like help cover that high recovery. Or let's say I knock, um, I'm been juggling my opponent, and then I want to cover with the can, then I can do that, and then I can cover the rest with duck hunt there. Um, the other thing with dash attack too is you also need to like be ready to control and ping it. So when I dash attack it, if I don't want it to move all the way, then I can do that as well. So let's put the example that we have Marth on this platform over here, and he's about to land there, and I have my can placed here. So if I want to stop him from just jumping around, Something I can do is I can throw up the can there, and then I can immediately stop it, so then that way it's like he kind of has to deal with it over there. And then I can just move, um, after I do this dash attack, then I can, can help control this area, or just like move back and then like catch him coming in against me. So, really important move to know, and um, definitely something that you just need to kind of have in your regular basis uh, to use against your opponents. Uh, Something else I should talk about really quickly is you're never going to really use smash attacks against it because when you do the smash attack, it treats it like doing a normal ping against the can. So smash attacking it is the same as basically pressing the B button. It treats like shooting it with the smash attack the same as hitting it with the reticle shot, um, which does allow for this like kind of weird thing with up smash where um, you can just sort of juggle it above you. I think you have to like run under it. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't really quite work the same way that it used to in the past. But yeah, like, you're never going to really use your smash attacks to help control the can. There's some very niche techs that you can learn with it, but nothing that you really want to focus on when you're a beginner. Um, the other tilt that you want to learn is up tilt. So the thing about up tilt is it actually sends the can behind you when you ping it. So this allows for like a lot of really unique situations. So once again, let's say I sent Marth off stage and he's recovering high. Um, I can do this, and then I can ping the can against him. So, in particular, one character this is really good against, or two, is uh, Robin Snake. So I do this, I ping it, and then I can up air it again to make sure that, like, the can is just, like, staying up there as long as possible to help just, like, keep them at bay there. So, definitely really encourage you to, like, learn all those situations where you're going to want to use that to just, like, help keep your opponent up above you and juggled. All right, so next up, um, the ones that we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on his aerial. So, fair is very self-explanatory. It's just gonna hit the can and it's gonna send it forward. So, if you just needed to get it forward like really quickly, that's all it's gonna do. Um, the next one, this was a technique that was used quite a lot in Smash 4, but not really in Ultimate because of the can changes, is back air can. Um, so the important thing about back air can is the can is gonna ping in the direction that Duck Hunt's facing. Um, the only exceptions to this rule are your up, um, the ones that hit the can above you, so up tilt and um, up air. Those send the can in the direction behind Duck Hunt. Um, so the reason for that's like the angle, but just remember facing, if it's up, then it's going to be behind. And then the other one is going to be, well actually, yeah, no, back, back air can follows the rule too. So the reason why this is kind of important is specifically for ledge trapping situations. So if I throw the can this way and I bear can it, then I can have the can just stay in this area right there very, very nicely. Whereas like, you know, if I do a forward can, I can only send it forward. So this is where bear can comes in handy. So I can just hit it with that and then I can just pick it back this way. But just like make sure you understand the exact area that you need to be in order to get the can um, at the ledge. In this case, we're going to do it here. And then that's going to cover it really well. Uh, the other thing that you can do too is if you can get the can to like um, go right above the ledge like that, that way the can can hit them and then it sends them close to center, it sends them center stage, and then you can cover that up with a um, with an up air. So to kind of show this off, do this. So you can actually get like a really nice kill confirm off of that. You just need to lab out the percents for each character there. And it is really good for like covering ledge options. So like if your opponent rolls, you can chase them with the can and then get that on them. Um, if they do standard get up, um, you can chase them and get them with that. And then even if they do jump, you can still chase them with the can and get them with that. If they linger here too long and you chase them with the can, then they'll get stage spiked, um, depending on how the wall is set up on there. So overall, a really good setup to know, and like even in neutral, like let's say I do this and then I bear the can, and let's say they're trying to land between, let's say like where Marth is right now is where the opponent is, 
then like I have like this whole thing to just control them and they're between like me and the can. So that's just like a lot of pressure you can create. So finding the situations where you can throw in the bear can is a really good thing to do. Um, the last one we're gonna talk about is the up bear can, which I showed off briefly, but it's a great way to just like kind of keep the can like above you and airborne. So like particular against like snake, you, um, you can just like throw the can all the way up there and just look how high it goes. Like you're just able to control so, so, so much with that. So if somebody's like trying to recover here, jump can and then there we actually got like the little um if you do hit two it like spikes the can and it also brings it um it also hits it in front of you too because of the angle um but like the rest of the move is going to send behind and then hit above you too so for any juggles that you might be doing really good thing to do so up tilt to up air very easy thing that you can do so like when you're trying to like anti or somebody, that's probably like the quickest way that you can just get can to respond up there. So just practice doing that one and then that it'll be a good way to just break it into your system. So we're not gonna be talking about down air can as I consider that one to be more of an advanced technique um, just because of the way that you do it. It's a little bit more complicated and your uses for it are gonna be a lot less compared to uh, forward air, back air and up air. So don't really focus on using this one if you're just starting out. So the main reason why that all these concepts are so important is just because without understanding how to move your can, it's going to be really hard to implement any single gameplay game plans that you have with uh, the can itself. Because like if you can't automatically tell the can what you want to do and like act it out, then you're just never going to be able to guarantee that you'll even be able to set up your game plan, let alone if your game plan was even correct or if it would work. So learning these techniques is completely vital for that. Um, the other thing too is that you also do need to know how to maneuver this can if you want to be able to recover with it. And like one of the main concepts that you really need to learn is um, that gravity. Um, so for example, when I do this and I have the can just like falling slowly, um, you're gonna notice that like the can's not really going to be covering much, so kind of to show this off really easily, we're just going to have like Marth do a smash attack on me. So if I do that, like the can's not covering me at all. So that's the reason why that like gravity is going to be really important in these situations like this. So have Marth come over here again. It's going to up smash me. And now we ping the can a couple of times, so that way it can fall on top, it can fall before me, and then that way it can cover me before that I fall down and land. I talk about this a little bit more in depth in my, um, in my recovery guide, but that's all part of just learning maneuverability of the can. And also, of course, whenever you increase the gravity, remember it's also going to like affect how short of a distance your can's going to go. So the more gravity that it has, it's just the less distance that you're going to be able to send it as well. So be sure that like you kind of have like a rough knowledge of like how much you've pinged the can and how much damage it has so then that way you know exactly how far you're going to be sending the can every single time that you hit it. Alright, the next part of this is going to be very, very self-explanatory. Um, next tip is learning how to throw the can properly. A lot of times when I'm watching a lot of these set critiques, I notice that like people like barely miss like their can throws. It's just like they haven't really practiced it enough and they're not used to throwing against like different styles of DI and because of that it makes it really hard for them to like get these conversions out. So the good thing is you can at least like practice doing this like very easily in training mode. Um, however obviously you're not going to have the DI but just being sure that you can just like throw your opponent to the can is such a vital task to do. Because like without doing that you're going to like greatly diminish how strong your punish game is. Um, like one thing that's like really one like tip that's really good to know is that when you have whenever you have your opponent like at higher percents when you have them on like the lower the can on the lower plat platforms of battlefield or pokemon stadium um, basically like if they're past like a certain percentage like i want to say it's like 50 percent you're going to be able to like always like automatically throw your opponent to the can itself so you put the can here grab them here back throw and then there, because like my gravity was really high, he wasn't exactly at a high enough percent. He was just like met himself right there. So like, you know, taking that in mind, and ping it once, and then that way he can just like be right there in order to like receive the can to get damaged by that. 
So make sure you practice those combos. Like do the very basics down at first. Like just do back throw to cans and stuff like that. Like you don't want to be missing. You don't want to be missing like really simple conversions like that. And then, you know, you can get more fancy with it later on, like the better and better that you get. Like one thing that like a lot of people like to do is like do like up throws and down throws into the can. And they might like even have cans in like really weird, unique situations where they can combo off of that. So you can get creative with all that stuff really easily, but just first practice doing forward throw and back throw to can, um, just because, or up throw to can too. I kind of missed up the timing right there. <laughs> um, just because like those are the easiest ones to get. For up throw to can, like that. That's really easy. Like if the can's gonna be right above you, just get the timing down to up throw them into it and then you know you basically get guaranteed damage off of that and then against like light characters that's always going to kill them very early all right so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is resetting your cad so this is a situation that comes up quite a lot with duck hunt players and even some like more advanced duck hunt players too your can's on the opposite side and you're on this end and basically you're about to get hit and like sent off the entire stage and something that they never do is reset their can. Um, the reason why that is a huge detriment to your gameplay is you're gonna have something like this happen to you. So now I'm in a situation where I do not have my can on me, and um, because of, like I'm fighting like a character like Marth, he can come off stage and edge guard me super, super, super easily, and uh, basically it will guarantee a stock because I was not ready to reset my can. So what you want to do in situations like this is you want to actively ping your can off and then like make sure that you ping the can more so that way you increase the gravity and the can's actually going to fall off the stage a little bit faster. And then because of that, um, you know, you'll be able to actually um, reset your can. Again, we're going to do like a situation like this. And now I can get my can to cover me safely and I can air dodge back. So this is a, like, the, of course, the greatest example of showing this off, but that gives you an idea. It's like just being ha having the ability to have the can to just like come back and assist you is so important. Like even if, I, even if it's not like something for recovery, it's just something really good to have. Also keep in mind, like your can's probably gonna be at least hit twice at certain points. So the more that you ping it, it'll fall down to the ground faster and you'll be able to get your can back a lot quicker that way too. So remember, um, if you have your can and it's off stage, you don't want it to just like float all the way down to the bottom like this. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna ping it a bunch of times so that way it falls down and now you can summon another one a lot quicker. So if you do the slow fall down, it's gonna take a while, but if you like ping it a lot, then you get it back significantly faster. So. Always remember those tips whenever you're playing. If you could, if you could be having like a much more useful situation for your can, where it's better to throw the can off stage, make sure you do it immediately so that way you can call it back to assist you, whether it's for recovery or neutral. Just make sure you know that like, hey, throwing the can off stage is not a useless thing to do. Like if I'm fighting Marth over here, my can's on the other side, and I have no hope of ever using that can in this situation, just remember, even as, I, even as you're getting hit, Again, we'll, we'll just make him do side smashes again. I can hit the can the entire time. So it doesn't matter what state I'm in, I'm always able to ping it. Um, even if I'm shielding, I can just like throw the can away as well. Like there's, if there is no use for your can being in the position it is, just throw it off the stage and reset it so that way you can immediately use it again. The earlier you ingrain this habit into yourself, the much better it's gonna be for you in the future. All right, so the last tip that we're gonna be talking about is how to use gunmen more effectively. Basically, if the duck cut player knows how to use gunmen, that generally means that they're gonna be a better player. Um, a lot of beginners really struggle with learning on how to use this move properly, just because like, if you're not familiar with like playing team games or like fighting games, it, it's kind of obtuse. So as I've mentioned in my gunman guide, these are an assist, but they're a, definitely a multi-purpose assist. So for one thing, they're a shield, so they're able to body block all projectiles that they come in contact with. And the other thing too is that they do provide like a whole zone um, that they're able to cover as well. So like when I do this, that entire line that they shoot out is their hitbox. So they're able to cover a huge distance, uh, a little more than half the FD for most of them. The only one that doesn't really do it is like the sombrero gunman. Um, so I'm gonna get to him, I'll pause it. 
um, as like his just distance does not go far, but he is very strong as well. Whereas there, as you can see, compared to going like through half the platform, it basically stops at the edge of the platform right there. Um, but with that hitbox, you're able to do a lot. Um, you're basically able to play a lot of mix-ups and mind games with it just because of like how fast they come out and um, exactly how they force your opponent to respond to it. Um, the first easy task we should talk about though is how you deal with projectile matchups. In particular, Samus, Wii Fit Trainer, and like Mean Gunner. So whenever um, you're dealing with a, one of those characters where they basically want to be on the other side and just like chuck projectiles at you at all day, Gunman is going to be your best friend in this. So even if they just throw it out, throw out their projectiles, like their charge shots and things like that, your Gunman comes out frame six. So if they're far away, you can just automatically respond with the Gunman and you just can completely absorb the attack like that. Um, the other thing too is that you can run and block it with your gunman, but keep in mind you need to do a wave bounce. So like in this case, as you saw there, being in front of the gunman is basically useless when I'm fighting with these projectile characters. So if I just do that, then they can just do that and I'm gonna get hit. Um, so for that reason, you do want to practice wave bouncing it so you can avoid this. So that way, um, when you do throw out your gunman, you're immediately going to be safe from that. So as long as you have your patience with your gunman, and remember if you have the lanky one or if you have the black coat one, um, you're going to be able to just like completely get through all the pressure that they're going to do. So in here we're going to send it out, but now she literally can't throw anything past this. He's just going to stay there and he's going to absorb all of it. So against your projectile characters, lanky and the black coat are just like the best to have. Because like the other thing that's beneficial about having um, the gunman out too, after she gets this recharged again is now I can just throw this out without having like any fear of another projectile hitting me. So that's the other thing that's good about gunmen is they provide a whole safety network for you to set up your can and even like occasionally your clay pigeons too, but you should mostly be focusing on just using your can and gunmen in this instance. Uh, the other thing too is um, something that you never want to do is you never want to use gunmen like this, just like right up against your opponent, which I've seen like a lot of people like even do gunmen this close. Just because the entire time that happens, they, they can just run up and hit you. Um, you're stuck in this animation for 45 frames, so it's not slow, but it's not fast either. Um, so you want to be about like, against most characters, you kind of want to be about this distance when you throw them out, because generally you can shield them before they can come and hit you. Uh, the main exceptions is if you're playing like against a fast character like Sonic, Captain Falcon, or Fox. Um, then you want to be a much farther away or you want to wait till you hit them before you throw out your gunman um, But you also don't want to be just throwing out your gunman just because too. your gunman need to have a purpose like Let's put let's put a uh, we fit train real quick to just like um, idle so like if I do this There's no reason for me to throw out a gunman right now because that gunman's not gonna throw out, that that gunman's not gonna cover anything at all um, So we're gonna put her at like 50% so she can actually like recover back So like, this makes no sense. You're not really covering anything there. Um, however, let's say I do this and now I drop down Gunman. So there, she actually had a hitbox she needed to avoid. So like, that's one instance of, okay, I'm putting this Gunman out to make sure that I cover some aspect of the stage that they need to avoid. You wanna apply that same thinking over here. So if I'm fighting like a character, like, um, you know, they're, they're not like too like too fast or anything like that. like it, um, let's say I'm fighting something like, um, let's say like a Martha or something like that. And then I throw out Gunman here. Well, he's not going to be able to immediately hit me from that position just because I'm like far enough away. So I'm able to respond to his attacks or something like that. And he's going like, to be forced to respond to it. So, you know, if I throw out Gunman, it's like he'll have to like run up shield or he'll have to jump. Those are like realistically his only two options or, um, because like that entire gunman shot's gonna cover this entire area, and he can try to hit me, but most likely I should, from like this distance over here, from throwing out gunman, I should be able to like throw up my shield before or spot dodge before he's able to attack me. So like that way, you're able to force and pressure your opponent to do something even without like the use of can. Uh, the other time that you want to use it is let's say your opponent is coming from the air, so 
let's say we fit unit trainers like use their jump or something like that. I just really put the character back in control. Yeah. So it's like it prevents them from landing on the ground during that time. So jump, gunman. Oh, oops, that's not gunman. So we'll have uh, jump, then gunman. Then it's like she has to avoid landing in that area the entire time there. So basically get used to doing that. If you see, let's say like you're juggling your opponent, get used to throwing out your gunman like right afterwards. So then that way you're able to do a lot more off of it. So we'll do that. And then it's like, we'll have the gunman out. So then that way, as soon as she's about to land, that's when the gunman's about to shoot. And like, that's gonna be a lot more stressful for her to deal with um, than compared to just like dealing with nothing. So like with her, without her fast falling or something like that, that gunman was about to hit her. So she's basically going to be forced to jump or like air dodge or like do her, in this case, because it's Wii Fit Trainer, do something like her header in order to like stall herself before she lands. So those are the times that you want to use gunmen. You want to use gunmen when you're about this far away to force them to react to that bullet. Otherwise, they, they will get damaged by it. Or you want to use it when they're about to land. So that way the gunman's going to shoot the second they touch the ground. So they need to avoid it. Um, and bring that into your minds when you're using it, and I, I promise you, your gunman pressure will become a lot more effective with that. Alright, and with all that being said, that's going to be concluding the video today. So, hope you guys learned some stuff here. Um, I definitely plan on doing uh, more advanced tips going on in the future, so like five more tips to just like improve your duck hunt a little bit further. And I probably will end up doing some for King K Rule as well. Um, definitely let me know what you guys thought. Did you guys learn anything new? Do you find yourselves having a lot of these flaws as well? Uh, what else would you like to me to see me do with uh, Duck Hunt 2 in the future? I know there's going to be a lot more that I need to cover with this character in the future, um, especially since we're kind of in a state of limbo, and I feel like there's a lot of blabbing that we can do, um, especially in particular with like all the stages and everything too. So let me down. Let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see me in my future, uh, what you thought about this video in particular. Um, subscribe if you liked it. Leave a like if you want to as well. Um, don't forget, we also do have all those fabulous masks that you can see on the Duck Hunt Discord store. Uh, Carried by Dinner just got added to it. So if you want to support me and the Discord as well, um, those will go directly to that. If you buy the coasting mask or any of the shirts affiliated with that, those will go to support uh, a bunch of artists within the Duck Hunt Discord too. So all for a good cause all around if you decide to get any of those products as well. Um, we're going to be posting a lot more critiques well, um, since I just had that one on Wednesday, so the schedule for that was going to be a little bit odd. Um, but rest assured, those are all going to get out, and you know, you're going to see the theme park content come out, you're going to see more of the Smash stories come out, so definitely you're going to see a good variety of things on the channel for the foreseeable future. But till then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and take care of yourselves until the next one.